Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Gabia. I'm core contributor and head of product at Mangrove. And today I would like to talk with you about our offer is code approach. So currently DeFi is facing two main issues in terms of liquidity, fragmentation and capital efficiency. You have liquidity scattered across various protocols, multiple markets for the same assets, and we have aggregators that aim to solve this issue but fail. You have added up latency, and aggregators make huge profits by capitalizing on slippage. However, with Mangrove's offer is code approach, liquidity fragmentation can be reduced and capital efficiency increased. So to begin with, I would just like to briefly cover what Mangrove is. So Mangrove is an order book based DEX that allows liquidity providers to post arbitrary smart contracts as offers. What exactly that means? Let's consider the following diagram. So Maker comes to Mangrove and posts an offer. In other words, he promises to deliver a specified amount of liquidity when an offer is matched. Maker is able to embed any type of logic into this offer. And essentially, all offers on Mangrove are just promises of liquidity. Therefore, liquidity is not locked. Maker is able to put this liquidity into some other DeFi protocol. Let's say borrow land protocol Morpho and earn additional yield on his assets. When the taker comes and takes this offer, Maker can decide to fulfill or to withdraw. The choice to withdraw is what we call last look mechanism, and I will cover it in more details later on. But in case Maker decides to fulfill this offer, liquidity is sourced and the offer is executed. Now, I would like to dig a little bit deeper into smart offers and how transactions occur at Mangrove. So whenever offer is matched, the smart offer code execution starts with last look. So the code of last look checks whether it's actually beneficial to fulfill an offer, because by the time the offer was matched, market conditions might have changed. In case the code detects that it's actually beneficial, we move to the second part, which is liquidity sourcing. Again, depending on the, whether liquidity sourcing is successful or not, the, uh, the trade will be executed or not. There could be various reasons for unsuccessful liquidity sourcing, but the most simple example could be that liquidity was moved elsewhere, and when the code tries to source it, it's just not there anymore. Now, I would like to talk a little bit about specific features that you can embed into your smart offers. So we just spoke about last look mechanism, which gives Maker an option to withdraw from executing the trade. I will give you a very quick example, but I won't go into too much details here. Um, if you like to chat or ask some questions, come visit us at our booth in Building B. But the quick example is as follows. Let's say user A wants to buy some ETH, and he is matched with 1,000 USDC of user B. User B can check this price on some other exchange, let's say Uniswap. If the price is higher there, user B says no to user A and sells on Uniswap. If it's lower there, user B can choose to sell to user A on Mangrove, or he can also perform an arbitrage by buying from Uniswap. But in both of those two cases, user B wins. Now, the second feature worth mentioning is what we call liquidity amplification. So again, all offers on Mangrove are just promises of liquidity. So this liquidity can be promised on multiple markets at the same time. Again, here I included a very simple example where Maker has 1,000 USDC, and he promises this liquidity on three markets. But again, it's not limited to three markets, right? You can promise this liquidity or on 10 or n markets at the same time. And this particular feature could be compared to the traditional leverage feature you have on other exchanges. Now, the last feature worth mentioning is multi-liquidity sourcing. So makers are able to embed any type of logic they wish into smart offers. Essentially, that means that liquidity can be sourced from literally anywhere within DeFi space. Here, I included a couple of the examples, such as Borrow Land Protocol, Morpho, Aave, Compound, liquidity pools like Uniswap or Balancer, or active yield management protocols like Beefy or Tattoo. Again, 
just a couple of the examples of the various possibilities out there. But now, all these features that I have mentioned open a very wide design space for sophisticated trading strategies. And uh, here at Mangrove, we figured what is a better way to showcase this than introducing simple, easy to understand, yet super powerful strategy. So let me introduce you to Candle. Candle is an automated market making strategy that uses on chain order flow to repost offers instantly with zero latency. So Candle posts bids and asks within a predetermined price range. If an ask is taken, Candle posts a bid on the other side of the book and vice versa. Essentially, the main goal of the strategy is to buy low, sell high, therefore it makes profit from a spread. In a sense, Candle could be compared to continuous AMMs, such as Uniswap V3. However, with Candle, you can adjust your spread, or as we call it, the size of the grid. And this spread, or the size of the grid, could be used to directly address volatility. But how can you choose the right spread? Well, let's consider the following diagram. So on x-axis, you have different levels of the spread. On y-axis, you have mean daily return, and different curves indicate different levels of the volatility. So let's say you exhibit 9.5% volatility, which is the top white curve on the diagram. So I would say the most logical thing to do would be to maximize your return, right? So therefore, you would just pick uh, the max point of the curve and choose the corresponding grid size. The general idea here is that if the volatility is increasing, you increase your spread or the size of the grid. And um, I think here the main or the most obvious difference between continuous EMM and discrete EMM is that with discrete EMM, you can use the size of the spread to directly address volatility. Of course, Choosing the spread first starts with answering the question, what is the volatility? If you can estimate or predict it well enough, the only thing left to do is choose the spread. Yeah. So, as I've mentioned, Candle is very similar to continuous EMMs, such as Uniswap V3. However, with continuous EMMs, there is no way to address, liquidity, uh, to address volatility. There is nothing in the functioning of such AMMs apart from increasing the price range when volatility is increasing. You may ask, so what? Well, I guess shout out to the, our best research team that provided us with these simulations. But based on our simulations, discrete AMMs such as candle or in other words, fee as a spread, significantly outperform continuous AMMs such as Uniswap V3. I guess it's a bit funny to talk about this right after Uniswap presentation. But the simple explanation here could be is that if you go back and forth in the continuous EMM, you lose each time because of the fees. With discrete EMMs, such as Candle, you can trade on both sides of the book and you can tune your spread according to your volatility, which leads to better return. But lastly, uh, I guess Mangrove's infrastructure might sound familiar to those who took a deeper look at Uniswap v4. We're happy to see that Uniswap is confirming our DeFi approach, but here I would like to compare one market, multiple contracts, and one market, one contract approach. So with one market, one contract approach, each market has its own rules for liquidity provision. That means each time, you imagine a new way to operate the market or a new way to provide liquidity to the market, you would have to create a new market, which still leads to liquidity fragmentation. Aggregating 100 of, I don't know, let's say USDC, USDT markets is just not sustainable. There is no perfect aggregator in terms of latency and economic value. And the proof of that is that you pay them because you need them. You split markets into little pieces and then takers have to pay for it. Essentially, the demand for aggregation is the frustration of the fragmentation. So why should we fragment again and again and then try to aggregate? 
DeFi won't be able to scale this way and we reduce the composability of the whole space. So Mango recognizes the need to have smart liquidity sourcing and therefore we use one market, multiple contracts approach, allowing liquidity to be drawn from multiple contracts within a single market. Essentially that means you have as many contracts as LPs on the same market and you don't have to create a new market each time. You can implement any logic you wish independent of the market you choose. And it goes both ways, right? You have one market, multiple contracts, as well as with one contract, you can address multiple markets at the same time. As I've mentioned, liquidity amplification feature. So to summarize, I would say there's more economic value in continuous liquidity. By allowing liquidity providers to embed any logic into their smart offers, Mangrove provides a solution to reduce liquidity fragmentation in DeFi space. At the same time, features such as last look, liquidity amplification, or multi-liquidity sourcing provide greater flexibility and capital efficiency to liquidity providers. So thank you very much. And uh, lastly, I would like to take an opportunity here and to announce that Mangrove is live on Polygon Mainnet starting from today. And you can try out our beta version of the UI via app.mangrove.exchange where you could try and place very simple market and limit orders. At the same time, for those who are interested in building on top of Mangrove, which is the most interesting part, we have contracts, SDK, Stratlib documentation available via docs.mangrove.exchange. And again, as I've said earlier, if you would like to chat with us, have some questions, come visit us uh, at Building B in our booth next, next entrance. So thank you. Which should I do? Uh,